This video is going to have a look at creating a new database and subsequent table within Access. Do be aware that this video is created using Access 2010 rather than 2007, but at level 1 there is little difference in what we're going to be doing. Having opened Access through Start Microsoft Office Microsoft Access 2010, this brings us the start screen where we can choose to create a new database, make use of templates that can give a good um, start point for a database, or open recent databases. In this instance we're going to create a new blank database and I'm going to be following the handout workbook for this video. So we want a new blank database called Friends and Colleagues. If I click inside the file name area and and learn how to spell, with our save point, it's identified below the text box, and we can choose to change that save point by clicking on the folder icon to the right of the file name text box. This will open up the File New Database window and we could choose wherever to save the database. I'm happy to leave it in Documents, so I'll cancel that one and then click on Create. This opens up the program window proper and it will display a blank table within the main window. With a database, whilst it can contain lots and lots of different objects, it does have to have at least one table for all of that information to come from. So again with this video we'll look at creating a table. The program window is laid out in much the same way as Word and Excel. We have the name box on the name bar at the top of the screen with the minimize, restore down and close buttons. We have the document name, here it's friends and colleagues, then we have tabs and the ribbon. Do please be aware that the tabs between 2007 and 2010 are a little bit different, but again at level 1 not in a way that will cause problems. We also don't have the office button. With our new blank table we can see that we've got a field or um, field heading already filled in, ID, and here is where we could build up our new table. But it's slightly easier to change a view. We've got the view buttons to the left hand side of the fields ribbon. We've either got the icon itself that's a button or the drop down menu. If I click on the drop down we've got data sheet view and design view. So we're currently in data sheet view. If we switch to design view, we have to save the table. And saving information is a very large part of access. As you work through, as you create things, you will be asked to save now and again. And the program does save everything as we go through. Again, following the handout, we're going to call this work colleagues. I think I chose the word colleagues just to make sure that everyone made sure their spelling was perfect. So if I click on OK, and that takes us into Design View. This is where we can set up the field names, and these are the column headings, and decide what type of information is stored within them. By default, Access will always start with a primary key, which allows us to identify every single record and give it a unique number. In this instance we don't need one so I'm going to turn that off by clicking on the button and then if I delete that row or that record, if I right click in the blue column and then we've got delete rows. We could also click delete rows up in the tools group. So that gets rid of that one and 
I'm going to fill in my names, or my field names. Do be aware that some words are prohibited from using, such as the word name. If I try and use that, I should get a warning dialog box pop up, hopefully, in a second. Oh, the machine's gone mad. There we are. So the name I've supplied is reserved name, um, or a reserved word rather, because it has a specific meaning within Access. So sometimes if you try and type in a certain word, you will be told that you're not allowed to use it, or it might cause problems. So in this instance, it is title, and then Once we have the field names set, and again, you'd want to make sure they're spelt correctly, we can have a look at the data types. Data type controls what type of information can be entered into a field. If you look down into the field properties group, you can see that for text, by default, it's a field size of 255, which means that you can type in 255 characters. It's not required. We can have zero length, so you don't have to have an entry. And um, we don't need to worry about everything else. We can change the data type by clicking on the drop down arrow and choosing from this list of object types. Okay, and again, for level one, we don't need to know about these, but it is just to give you an idea of how the program works. Date of birth, rather than having that as text, we want that as a date time. And that means that only uh, date or time can be entered into that box. For age, we're going to set that to a number. And then for car, it's going to be a yes no question or a yes no object. So this controls the type of information that can be included. Once you're happy with your field or your table layout, if we switch views again, and this time I'm just going to click on the icon, which will take us back into datasheet view, and again we're asked if we want to save the table, or we're rather told we have to save the table. So if I click on yes, and there's my table with the field headings and the records themselves. And each one of these little blue squares or rectangles is a field. If I start entering in the information, and again this is following the handout, So to navigate a table, all we need to do is press the up, down, left and right buttons on the keyboard, the cursor keys, or we can use the mouse cursor to select the appropriate field, or we can use the tab key to move right along a list. As soon as the tab key gets to the end of a record, it will drop down to the next line. So let's moving around. All we have to do to insert information into a field is click on that field with the mouse or select it with the cursor keys and then start typing. If you make a mistake, if I purposefully make a mistake, 
and keep on typing. Seven. What you will find is that if we suddenly recognize or see that mistake, if we go for the undo button, that has undone all of my typing. So it's not necessarily a good tool to use because if we undo then it will undo lots of things. And if I was five records in and noticed an error, again undoing isn't necessarily the right option to go with. So trying to make sure that you are very accurate with your typing is a very important part of access use. When filling in tables or entering information, one thing to be aware of is the ordering in which you enter that information. With Excel, lots of people make use of columns. So they'll go down a column, so it might be they'd fill in all of title and then all of last first name, then all of last name, and then all of town, and so on. With access, it's slightly easier to make sure you always go across a record rather than down a column. And that way you can make sure that all information is always in the right place. And last but not least for this video, if I put in Norman, and again I'm not paying attention, With the date of birth, we set it to a date time. So if I tried to type in a word and then exit that cell or that field, I get an error message pop up because we're not actually allowed to type anything but a date or time into that area. If I just type that in. The same is true for numbers. If I was to try and type the word word into the age box, again because it's set to the number data type, we can't actually type anything in other than numbers. So that is a quick video on creating a database and a table and entering information.